KD Jedi show, the first one of 2023, coming in kind of late, but hey, it's never too late to let you know, Happy New Year. Welcome to 2023, and look, in the world of identity, 2023 got off to a bang. We got a lot of news that we're going to get to, uh, to to cover up what's been going on in the last month. We've got a great interview lined up with Mr. Eric Olden from Strata.io, one of my favorite identity companies that's out there right now because I really like some of the innovative things that they're doing. Technology is pretty cool. So me and him get to geek out a little bit. We'll get to that a little bit later. But also got some news coming to you from the world of the Identity Jedi, or as I like to refer to it, the Identity Jedi uh, universe. So some big announcements. We're going to be making some on the newsletter, so make sure to go to the identityjedi.com and follow those, follow those, because this is only a monthly show. So I don't want you to miss out for an entire month and not know what's coming on, because some of this stuff I can't really talk about yet. So look, before we even get to everything that's going on to news, we do have to take a second, and I want to take a second to address just kind of where we are right now. Look, by the time you're watching this, we, we've seen over 40,000 jobs, and that may be even on the small side, uh, lost in the tech sector, right? A lot of the big tech companies are laying off, even smaller companies are laying off. It is a tough time right now for a lot of our colleagues, a lot of our friends. So let's make sure we're doing everything we can to help, right? And that not, that's not just posting on LinkedIn or, or whatever, social media, hey, I feel really bad for people out there, but you know, the last time we saw something like this happen was 2008 or 2009, when we saw such a big force, uh, a layoff force from the tech sector. But, you know, so many things have advanced, especially how we use uh, social media, specifically LinkedIn. The LinkedIn platform is night and day to what it is now and what it was back then. So I encourage you if you're watching this and um, I ask of you if you're watching this, Listen, if you're sitting there now and you're like, look, I wasn't laid off, but I know a lot of people who were, start using your LinkedIn network. Start you know, making connections for people and helping people line up to the right jobs. And so I'll be doing some more things about that. That's one of the more exciting news, kind of shifting that we're going to get into. I'm going to be working with some different uh, friends of mine and connections that I have to kind of set up uh, some weekly virtual mixers for those who have found themselves out of work to kind of get up with hiring managers or anybody that's hiring, or maybe it's a support group where, look, this is a shock, right? All of a sudden you wake up one day and the place that maybe you've worked at for 10 or 15 years or the, the young startup that you were working for is now gone and you don't kind of know what to do. And it takes some time to kind of get through that, right? So I would say to you right now, if you're watching this, if you have been affected, listen, it's okay if you're a little emotional about it. It's okay if you wake up and don't really know what to do. What I would implore you to do if you have the ability is take some time for yourself, really assess process what you're going through and then lean on your network, right? Lean on your friends, your friends that are out there, check in on them, make sure they're doing okay. Look, we are all in this together. A buddy of mine and my mentor, Richard Bird, always says, life is a team sport. And this is when it means it the most, right? So let's be a team out there. Let's help each other out. Let's do what we can to make sure people are finding new opportunities, better opportunities to continue to grow their career and be in this amazing tech field that we all love. So with that, let's get to some other things that we got going on. Let's talk about the news that's coming in the last month. Man, we've had some, some pretty big things going on in the world of identity. So let's talk about acquisitions because 2023 kicked off with some acquisitions. We had a couple of ones, uh, the biggest one, Cell Point acquiring Sexzetta. Uh, moving into the third-party identity space, this gives Cell Point an opportunity to round out their platform as they start to enter the platform wars and making sure that they can go toe-to-toe -to -toe with the likes of Octas. We've got things like Pravada, Improvada, One Identity. Uh, we got a shout out to FastPath, who's coming along too with their recent purchase uh, last year. You're starting to see these companies start to create their little platform, Cell Point continuing uh, to get into that fight, making that purchase of, of Segzeta. We also had some uh, smaller purchase. Simeo acquired uh, a company, I believe it's Pathmaker, an acquisition there to try and shore up some of the things they're doing from a services side. So we're starting to see some activity right out of the gates in the new year, right? January is SCO week uh, or SCO month, really. You see a lot of teams their sales kickoff, setting their themes for the year and what they're going to be going after. It's going to be very interesting to see how this first quarter in identity really kind of kicks off. But we have all these layoffs, we have these things, but this is the time as the economy starts to shift and change. We've seen this before in the identity industry. This is the time where, you know, technology companies really start to shine by really showing their value. And as a customer, if you're out there, I would tell you, this is the time to really push for that from your vendors. You know, really make them explain to you and show you, give you directions of how you can get the most value out of what you have. The other thing we got to talk about, it's not really necessarily identity related, but I mean, we got to kind of talk about it. Like the T-Mobile data breach, Jesus, right? Once again, we get yet another data breach and it's coming around API security. And this has been a thing, a, a theme for the last three, four years that we seem that 
with bad API security, it's something we haven't honestly really put in a whole lot of focus into. And if you say, yeah, we have in my company, cool, that's great. But, you know, data that we get out about these regions would tend to say that as general as an industry, we have it. But this one was pretty bad. A lot of exposed data that came out. I think it was over 37 million records and identities, all just around not doing, I don't want to say simple things. Let's not do it that way, but it's not doing the things we need to do around API security. So, you know, coming up in the next couple of weeks on the Identity Gen Universe, we'll have some discussions about that. Uh, let's just say I've got some inside baseball for some experts around that area. And I'll be making sure to have a good interview with them and bring in that content. So again, you got to make sure you're tuned in to the Identity Jedi universe, identityjedi.com to hear everything about that. Uh, but that's kind of around the news we have kicking off, right? It's been a, I want to say it's been a slow, fast start. A lot of things coming in, coming in in the beginning of 2023. But I'm expecting as we get through this first quarter and into the rest of the year, I'm calling the shots. We're going to probably see a couple of more acquisitions. I think those are coming. I think the other companies are going to be doing something. CyberArk's been awfully quiet, right? I haven't seen a lot from CyberArk. I wouldn't be surprised to see them do something this year. As we start to see how this works, and we should start seeing adoption of the new platforms. Okta's got their Okta Identity Cloud now. They've got their IJ system. They've got their PAM system. We're going to see what the adoption of that looks like and how these platform wars start to take place. What do customers really think about this? Are they going to get the value that they really want out of this consolidation? We'll start to see. I think this year is going to be the testing ground and a rough one to go into. Again, look, the market's turning. Call it whatever you want to. A lot of people don't want to say the R word, but you know, if it walks like a duck and talks like a duck, it's usually a duck, but it's okay. We don't have to call it that for this one because it's going to be very interesting. So like I said, on this show, we've got a great interview coming up with Eric Olden from Strata.io. Him and I geeked out about some things. I really, I have to be honest. I'm a fan. I love what they're doing. I love the identity orchestration piece that they're coming after. I like the way that they're thinking about it and the things that they're producing. It's going to be interesting to watch this company continue to grow and what value they can bring. So I don't want to ruin too much of the interview. So let's just go ahead and hop straight into that. And after that, we'll get back and we'll wrap it up. Welcome to 2023. Let's get to the show. All right, everybody, welcome back to the Identity Jedi Show. You guys know it's your favorite host, the Identity Jedi, also known as David Lee. And I'm here today with a special guest, Mr. Eric Olden from Strata.io. Eric, welcome to the show, and thanks for coming. Thank you for having me, David. So uh, I'm excited to have you guys on the, on the show today. I became a fan of Strata. I'm trying to think when I saw you guys. I'm pretty sure it was Gartner. It might have been Identiverse too, but I went by the booth, loved what you guys were doing from a product perspective and, and love what it means from the identity industry perspective. So I was super happy to get you guys to come on and just kind of talk about, like, the, have a conversation about the product and, and what you guys do and, and where you guys feel that you're different. So with that, we'll get started, but I'll, I'll give you a chance to introduce yourself to everybody and just tell us a little about yourself and what you do over at Strata. Yeah, great. So I'm Eric Olden. I'm one of the co-founders and CEO of Strata. I've been in identity for a long time. First, I was a founder and CTO of Securant, one of the co-authors of SAML. Then I was the CEO of Simplified. We did SaaS single sign-on. And then I ran identity at Oracle. And then I started Strata. So I've been in identity for a long time, since the 90s. Yeah. No, it, you know what? That's the, that's the one thing I, I've, I've come to love about identity. Like, right, once, once you get in it, you just, it's, it's like, I, I guess anybody can say this about their industry, but like, once you get in it, man, you just, you just love it. You stay in it. You want to keep going. There's so many problems to solve. There's so many different ways to do it. And then of course, like with anything with technology, right, we grow and change and new things come out and like, oh man, like you're like, I remember I had this problem. Now I can solve it better. <laughs> it's so, so true. Uh, it's, it's one of the great things I love about it. So tell us a little bit about, about Strata, right? So when, when you were looking at this and you know, what was the moment, right? Whether it was you know, like Doc Brown, right? Like, you know, slipped off the toilet and he hit you. He's like, this is what I got to do. Or you were driving in your car or whatever. Like, what, what was the one thing that you said, no, nope, we're definitely going to go solve this and this is what I want to do? Yeah, well, great question. I think, you know, what I would, I would say is around identity orchestration. That's the, what the focus of my company now, Strata, what we do. And there are a couple of things that happened when I was, I just left Oracle and mm -hmm. I did great experience at Oracle because at Oracle, you've got access to the world's biggest organizations, right? right. Everything's on a massive scale. And there was this big shift that we saw going on to the cloud. 
where people were moving not just to one cloud, but they were going to multiple clouds. And my role at Oracle was to get them to use the Oracle cloud and all of the cloud technologies we were doing. And it became pretty clear to me that it wasn't going to be a winner takes all in the cloud. And instead, you're going to have multiple clouds. And everybody I was talking to was using Amazon and Azure and Oracle and Google. So the interesting thing was, well, if you can't have everything in one place, how do you manage it when it's everywhere? And that really changed my, my point of view. And, um, you know, I happened to be on a surf trip with the two people who became my co-founders and I was sitting in the ocean in Sri Lanka and just had this realization that instead of trying to put everything in one place, what if we right. just embrace the idea that everything's going to exist all over the place and really took the thinking from one organization or one set of silos to everything's a silo, everything's everywhere. And it became a really challenging problem to solve. And then I said, hmm, well, nobody has tried to solve this problem, although it's been hiding in plain sight. What if... Right we created a software that solved that natively. And that was the moment where identity orchestration, as I see it, was born. So beautiful place and a, I think a, a wonderful idea. I would say that there you go, man. Like it's nothing better than being out in the water, right? And you kind of connect and kind of get that aha moment. So that's, <clears throat> that's awesome. And you, you hit on a couple of different topics that I love. And I promise I won't go on a rant. We won't de-dive on this. Maybe we'll, we'll, We'll come back later and we'll talk about that. But, the, you know, the whole multi-cloud thing, right? And as we start to, you know, work with these customers you see within the identity industry, to your point, like there's no stopping it, right? We're, so why come in and just say, okay, no, only use one. Okay, you're going to use multiple. Let's just let that happen. So, you know, the to, to see that and as we see this cloud growth just kind of really accelerate, right? To where, you know, most of the customers that, that I would talk to, you know, they're 80, 90, a lot of more 100% cloud. Right. And you still have the, the, the bigger legacy companies who are trying to you know, be cloud first and moving over. But we're starting to see more and more companies where that's just the way to go. And so when you have that, you know, you, you've got to start to be able to, to lean into where the customer is going and create products that fit them for, for where they're at. So with with identity orchestration and what Strata does, what would you say? Like, what's the you know, let's take a step deeper into like what's the actual problem that that's solved, like the actual, you know, like use case where it's like, hey, like using identity orchestration, it makes this thing better. Yeah. So great question. I think there's, you know, just a level set when we talk about identity orchestration, there's all of the identity concerns that we're all familiar with authentication, access control, authorization, audit, governance, things of that type. And with multi-cloud, you've got that problem in a lot of different places, two or right. more in yeah. multi-cloud. So the trick is, well, how do you think about your access, for instance, in a consistent way where you may have a uh, part of your business using Okta for single sign on to your SaaS applications and another part of your business using Azure AD from Microsoft. Maybe that's your, your, your commercial website. And so now you've got two places where you've got identity and access. And so if you're the practitioner and you're saying, well, I've got these two IDPs, how do I use them for what they're both respectively strong for. And at that point, that's where you need a, an overarching orchestration layer that allows you to, for instance, create a policy that can span whether a user authenticates in Okta and then be able to use that same identity over in an Azure controlled world. So orchestration is really about keeping things consistent between these two IDPs, for instance. And then from the application side, you've got in the enterprise hundreds, if not thousands of applications. And so that's where you need to deliver this identity. And that's always been the challenge in identity is the last mile yeah. integration, right? How do you get identity into the application? And historically, that meant that you had to custom code it. And, you know, we started back in the day with cookies and that turned into SAML and then later OIDC. And for the enterprise that's trying to modernize their applications and move them to the cloud, they've got a mix and a match of all of these different kind of 
integration patterns. And historically, if you wanted to switch one thing with another, you had to rewrite the application and right. it just can't scale. And so what orchestration allows you to do is to decouple your application from your identity layer. And so with software, you don't need to recode your application because you can mix and match your IDPs with your applications without doing any custom code. And then the third part of it is how do you integrate all of the different vendors and technologies on your infrastructure? And in that, we think about that as a fabric or an identity fabric. I think Gartner calls it a cybersecurity mesh. And when you think about that, I'm talking about your LDAP, your directories, access management systems, your authentication systems, and the list goes on. And over time, people have gotten a lot of a lot of these different technologies. But the problem is that the different vendors, they come and they go, they acquire one another, and you know, technology becomes outdated and end of life. So you have this really challenging environment in the enterprise of all of this fragmentation. So with orchestration, you create this layer, an abstraction layer called an identity fabric, and that allow you to then abstract out, like for instance, a legacy identity system and switch it with a modern one without changing the applications that application, were right, yeah. So three wow. things, interaction and consistency and integration. That's really what identity orchestration is all about. I love it. Truly, you know, helping to solve that problem, like within identity, to your point, that, that last mile, right? I saw so many organizations and their identity projects always seem to stall because it's like, okay, they come in and they integrate, they get an identity, they got access requests, they do an authentication, they're great. And it's great for like the AD enabled apps, right? And, and an LDAP enabled app, right? And so that's, and, you know, some organizations will do hundreds of applications and you're like, yes. And it's like, great, but we have these other 400 <laughs> that we can't get to, right? And it's like, okay, either we have to go tell the app developers, hey, can you go re shift your code and get on their time schedule, right? It, it's always been that that kind of struggle. So that's awesome that, that you guys are kind of bringing, you know, that layer there. Quick question, and, you know, we'll go a, a, a little technical here, but, but not super. So like in that, in that access, when you have like the multiple IDPs, are you guys just like kind of moving the authentication from like being able to, like, to broker the authentication between one another? Or are you guys actually do anything with like the token itself? Like, do you guys like redo the token and add more claims into it? Or do you guys stay out of that and just go, hey, we're just able to say, if it's Microsoft, it's Vodka, whoever, like we can take it and then pass it to whoever. Yeah, no, that's that's an insightful question. I think the the way that we handle that from a technical standpoint is to be able to transform any session into any other kind of session on the fly gotcha. without any changing. So some way to think about it is like, a, you know, your travel adapter, you go to Europe or you go to Asia, right. you've got your, your thing, you get at the travel store and it has every <laughs> right. kind of module. And so you go to the hotel room, you're not worried can I plug my laptop in? Well, if you've got this adapter, you know it works anywhere in the world. And so right. that's kind of the technology. So we have this capability. The, the workhorse of our software is called an orchestrator. And it's a runtime system. And it can be a proxy, but it's not like the proxies that are out there, the Nginx or the Apache ones, right? So we right. built it from scratch. And what it does is it, it'll take a session in one end for instance, say a legacy cookie-based session, but the application we want to connect with is going to use OIDC. So the orchestrator can transform a cookie session into an OIDC session. Nice. And, okay. and so it, it basically can transform any into any, and that's the magic that allows us to say, look, it doesn't, you don't ever have to change your application. It'd be like going into a hotel room. You're not gonna change what's in the wall. You use the <laughs> right. adapter. No solve your problem right right so that's that's kind of the the way to think about it is a runtime session and token transformation and it is all done in a really secure and trusted way so we are really experienced working with these sensitive i mean credentials and sessions right, right, yeah. keys to the kingdom so you you need to do that in a very trusted high secure way so yeah security is built in so <clears throat> 
shifting gears just a little bit, right? You, you've, you've got a background in identity, right? So you've, you've seen it now kind of go through these different phases, right? I always like to say like, you know, when I got started in identity, in it, an identity early 2000s, it was like in its infancy phase, right? We were still fighting, trying to explain to customers what this meant and why it was important, right? The, the products we were using, although at the time were the best it can, looking back, right? They were slow, they were clunky, like it was, it was, it was a hard haul, right? So we look back now and it's, I'm always so proud of where the identity industry has come, right? And now that, you know, we can have like deep conversations with the customer because we're not, you know, feeling like complete salesmen anymore and like, no, trust me, you really, really need this. Like they already know that. So with your experience and what you've seen, right? And looking at the industry now, what do you, what do you think it's going, right? Where, where do you see the identity industry and then the next big problems we need to solve? Yeah, I think where we, we're at a really interesting crossroads and one of, I don't know, pet peeves or, or things that just really make me you know, shake my head is how we're so accustomed to using passwords for security. Yeah. And they're just absolutely terrible. <laughs> they're, they're almost, I think I forget which, what statistic it is, but it's higher than 80% of breaches are caused by vulnerability, right? right? Phishing, replay, you name it. And it's, it's like this time has come to move away from passwords and go into multi-factor and passwordless. And what I think is finally allowing that to happen is if you think about the way that multi-factor started, it was with tokens and yeah, I sold two companies to RSA. So very familiar with that whole key fob <laughs> model and it right. worked really well for at the time, but it was a hassle, right? If you didn't have your token, you go through all these hoops to be able to get a new one, all that. And it, it was just not a great user experience. And so in order to get security, you had to compromise the convenience and that led to very limited adoption. However, today we all have phones and what your phone has on it is a really powerful biometric sensor. Right. And yes, you know, you've got it with you and <laughs> you, you can take a picture of your face, scan your fingerprint, whatever it is, it doesn't matter what vendor. The key is that now we can get rid of passwords using password list by making it more convenient. So you don't have to remember all of those dozens of passwords that actually that's the inconvenient thing now. And if you can replace that with your, you know, face scan or something like that, then you've got a, a real compelling reason to improve your security while improving the user experience. So I think that's a really cool thing that's happening right now. We're doing a lot of work with companies like Hyper. I think they've got a really cool technology yep. for they do. Pass keys are really interesting as well. I think there's, you know, we're in this new dawn of passwordless. So our role to play in orchestration is to deliver that technology to your applications without rewriting them. So the, we work hand in glove with all those technologies. So that's one thing I'm really excited about right now. Um, and then the other part, if you go a little bit further out and you think about how the role of your digital identity matching up with your physical identity, right? So biometrics is the kind of the, the intersection. And where we need that is everywhere. And if you think about ubiquitous, truly trusted authentication, where if you can link a digital identity to your physical, like you really know it's one person, right. then change the game for whatever, social commentary, social networking, democracy for that matter, right? Like let's let's think about how all this controversy about voting and this and that and, and fake votes. It's like, you know, again, we have the technology and I can't wait for the near future where it'll be pervasive and we won't have all this fraud and all this kind of subterfuge that is common with this, kind of early days of the internet. I think you remember the New Yorker cartoon that started it all on the internet. No one knows you're a dog. Remember that one? Right. Um, yep. Yep. <laughs> here we are like 20, 30 years later. And it's like, it's later, yeah, right? that's still, <laughs> still true. Right. Yeah. You know what? It's, and I, and I promise we won't, we won't go down a rabbit hole, but would, would love to, you know, catch up again and have this conversation. Like, you know, you're starting to sound very web three ish now. Right. Which, I'm all for, right? Because it's, it's totally about looking at, getting a chance to redefine like everything that we know now, right? And all the technology we have now, how will we do this better? And to your point, like having a 
you know, ubiquitous identity that is truly authenticated to a person that this is yours, right? And now we say like, okay, Eric, here you go, right? And so you can control it. You decide what attributes you want to share. And, and so we, we, we now, it changes how we step into this world of interaction. And I'll just talk digitally, right? Like how our apps are created and how we deal with, you know, those things. And now it's like, okay, now I've got a trusted verifier that I'm going to take in that this is this, but I know that this is, I've put it, I've, give, I've given digital identity to the people that, that it is, you own this identity and we've given you the proper ways to control it and secure it, right? Which I think will be a complete game changer. I'm, I'm, I think I've been a little in it too long that I started to get a little bit of skepticism. I'm like, I, I hope it's, I hope we start to see real change in it in the next three to five years. I think we can, because I think the technology is absolutely there, right? It's just, it's, it's fundamental, right? It will change a lot of things of how we build things, but I think you make some valid points and I think it's time. So I'm excited to see, you know, where it goes. And yeah, I think, you know, looking at that, right, this is, I mean, let's just play this out. That puts Strata in a, in a very good position to kind of help usher some of that in, right? You guys have your any to any sessions, right? You know, and it's as you, as we look at that, we would see people transitioning to that and being able to, now I got to take this mix in and I've got to be able to orchestrate any type of this authentication, you know, what better tool than you guys right now to be able to help orchestrate that. So there you go. Give you guys a free plug. I'm, I'm already <laughs> I saying, it. I thought everybody else already, like, no, I really, I really like what you guys are doing in the work because it's, it's, you know, I'm, I want identity to be easier, right? You know, if I had a campaign, it'd be make identity easy again, right? Because like it was never easy, but I think we, I think we truly do have a chance to make this easier for our customers and really get to some of the innovative stuff that, you know, most of us are all, we're tech geeks, right? We, we love this stuff, right? We love how technology makes things easier and better. And I, I, I really truly feel like Identity is right at that verge of doing that, taking that next big step and, and really becoming, you know, just revolutionary in, in how we deliver things. So, all right, we're going <clears> to, <throat> we're going to kind of end the topics on, on, on these questions, right? So if you had a magic wand, right, you could change anything you want, right? Flick of a wand if you're a Harry Potter fan, right? And poof, it changes. From everything that you've seen in, in your experience in identity, like what, what would you change? Ooh, that's a big one. I think it would, it kind of what I was saying earlier about getting rid of passwords. The passwords, um, yeah. Yeah, but I think really it would be that everyone worked with standards and became standards mm. first. Because if you want to do anything at scale, it's got to work everywhere. And the, the notion of the old way of thinking about locking in customers with proprietary technology. And in the very early days, like you were saying, the early 2000s, they're, they're, SAML hadn't even really gotten widely implemented. We were still finalizing yeah. it and so forth. So it was kind of like the, the best of the bad outcomes was proprietary sessions and so forth. But once that SAML came out and then got improved with OIDC, now you start to see more ubiquitous standards-based authentication, which was huge in making things safer. And then the second thing I think was um, what I'm particularly interested in is standards around authentication. So FIDO and FIDO2 and passkeys. And what that's going to do is to make it authentication, strong authentication, make it ubiquitous. And so I think that's really exciting. That's happening. And now the third piece that hadn't really been solved is what about the policies, right? What about the mm. rules themselves? And yeah. you've got a huge fragmentation problem. And so we, we got together with a bunch of other people in industry and came up with a new standard called Identity QL or IDQL, Identity Query Language. Okay. And uh, right. we built an open source reference implementation called Hexa. So it's free. And you can think about IDQL as the generic structure for identity and access policies. And it was designed to work east and west. So across all the cloud platforms, like policy consistency between Azure and us and GCP, for instance, right? And also through the stack. So having policy that can work at your application at the data, at the infrastructure and the network level. So east and west, north and south. And what IDQL does is translate proprietary policy into something generic in kind of modern, you know, JSON in, in a declarative way. 
So then you can take that and pass that into another system. So for instance, you've got a policy in Azure and you want that same policy in Amazon. So right. you use Hexa, point it at Azure. It'll extract the proprietary imperative API calls to create the structure of that policy, the native policy, translates it into the generic IDQL policy, and then you push that, transform it again into right. Amazon policy. So why that is a big deal? Because now from a governance standpoint, you can say, I know it's always these mm, kind of yeah. users who can get to this kind of data. And I don't right. care what platform it runs on, it works everywhere. So we're really excited about that. We just got accepted into the CNCF last year and we're busy bringing IDQL into a standards body. And uh, so we're really excited about that. So the long answer to your simple question, but <laughs> the one is standards everywhere. Right, and, right. Uh, should be free. Yeah, dude, that is... <clears throat> That is awesome. That, that really is. And that is amazing. So thank you for ruining my weekend because I will be researching and studying about all of that this weekend because I'm a huge <laughs> nerd. But that is, man, that, no, that is, that, is, that is so super cool. As I, you know, as I look at this and I've looked at the industry, that, that's one of the things that has always been, you know, and I'm pretty sure it struggles everywhere, but our struggle specifically in identity is like the standards and what's there. And it was so funny. We got into this and ID Pro Slack channel had launched their, their new authorization service or whatever it was. And of course, they defined another, you know, policy language. And one of the discussions was like, oh, yeah, again, yet another policy language is like, why can't we just all get along and, and pick one to, to be able to handle this and to have our customers be able to do the orchestration, but also handle all these different things. We're going to need standard space to help us go through. So that this is that's huge, man. On that point, David, just last week, we demonstrated IDQL translating the Amazon theater policy language is what you're referring to. Yeah. And transform Cedar into Azure policy and Azure policy into Cedar. So it's pretty cool. Cedar is what is used for Amazon's verified permissions. And that's a really yep. cool technology. It's a, another thing to nerd out on over the weekend, but yep. we're, we're excited about that because what verified permissions is doing is taking authorization out of the application and putting it into a centralized yep. piece. And what we're doing with orchestration is saying, okay, when you make that your policy decision point, how can you bring in existing applications that don't know about that? How can you tie existing applications into that? And our software will allow you to do that. So yeah. why is that interesting? Because you don't have to write your applications to the verified permissions API. Orchestration does it without rewriting apps. And that means that you can make, in this case, Amazon or AWS rather, the control plane for the other cloud. So you can say, I want to control my GCP apps and my Azure apps using stuff on AWS. So yeah. we're really excited because it's really about making the complex simple. And you know, Absolutely. in our world, it's like, hey, don't make people integrate it. Don't make them rewrite their apps. Just plug it all together, show right. it at work, and you're going to make a difence in, in the identity world. Yeah, Absolutely. Man, Eric, this has been this has been awesome, man. You guys are you guys are rocking and rolling over there. <laughs> We're having a good time. I won't lie. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Sounds like it, man. I'm glad I got a chance to get you on. So hey, thanks for taking the time. I like to keep these kind of short and sweet, so I appreciate it. Listen, for for those of you that end up watching this, or those of you like that read the you know, read the transcript, listen, strata.io, strata.io, check them out. So Eric, with that, I'll let you get any final words in before we sign off. David, wonderful being here today. And, you know, we've got an offer for our listeners here today. And, uh, you know, Strata, we're always looking for the really hard problems to solve with orchestration. And we've got a, a nice campaign to allow people to submit the hardest identity challenge that they can think of. And in exchange, we'll share a pair of iPod Pro headphones if you submit it and agree to take a demo of our software. So it's a real quick demo, but if you're interested, you can check out our website. It's at strata.io slash podcast. And that's strata, S-T-R-A-T-A dot I-O slash podcast. And we'd love to see some challenges. We've had some really good, fun ones to uh, crack the code on. So we'd love to, to see what we can come up with with the audience here. All right. Now that is awesome. So there you, there you guys have it. The challenge has been laid out. 
not only can you get some some free AirPods, but look, you, you if if you've been like saying, look, I got challenges that nobody else can fix, because you know every customer thinks they've got problems that nobody else can fix. Now is your chance to verify that. So check that out. That is so super cool, Eric. Thanks for making that shout out. So you guys know what to do. Head to strata.io slash podcast, submit your challenge, and we'll see if we can get you some free iPods there. Sounds great. Thanks right. again. Yep. Thanks. Take care. And we're back, man. Look at that. Eric coming with the heat, throwing out the challenge. So I'm very interested in this. So you heard it there. You know where to go. Strata.io slash podcast and give him all your challenges, right? All the hard challenges that you that you think like, look, at my company, there's no way anybody can fix this. I say put them to the test. So let's do it, people. Let's do it, Jedi. Put them to the test. Hit it up. See if you can win yourself uh, some free AirPods. So listen, that's the show. For this month, wrapping this up. Thank you so much, as always, for tuning in. Make sure you subscribe. Stay up with everything that's going on. Theidentityjedi.com. You can sign up for the newsletter. Be in the know. That's weekly. Drops every Wednesday. Uh, the premium edition also drops on Wednesday. You get more content, uh, blogs, expert commentary, all those things. You also get access uh, to some of these interviews uh, a week in advance before it drops to everybody else. So if that's something that you're so inclined to do, you can sign up straight on the identityjedi.com website. And one of the things, last thing before I let you go that's coming to the universe that I can talk about is uh, more content. So blogs are coming to the identityjedi.com as well as the newsletter. You'll be able to see those on there. There'll be some free, there'll be some premium. So listen, I'm just going to be giving more and more content to you. I'm excited for this year to growing out this universe, continue to expand and grow this membership that we have. And uh, yeah, let's, let's, let's take it strong. And, and with the newsletter, please don't forget this. We do have a merch program. So as you sign up and you get referrals, you get free merch. I want everybody to get to the point where you have the Identity Jedi t-shirts on. We can show up at conferences, let everybody know what it's all about. So with that, you guys know what it is. I love to end my newsletter. If you read it, if you have it, you would know. Be good to each other. Be kind to each other. Make sure to love each other out there. It's going to be a tough one. But if we all stay into together, we'll all be better for it. Till the next time, Identity Jedi out.